Today in the Smart Wood Shop, I'm going to build this cradle for the brand new Saw Stop CTS. If you want to get a detailed set of plants to build a Smart Wood Shop for yourself, a Smart Station, or a Smart Bench, or any of the accessories that work with the system, there's a link in the description of this video down below. I have all of the Smart Wood Shop plans on my phone, and so it's nice. I've got a note with them all in. I can just go in and type in smart. I got so many notes to try to find it. I just type in smart and find them all and then I find the cradle. And so then I have the plans for all of the smart plans and I'm able, even though it's a, it's, you know, a smaller phone, it doesn't really matter. I don't need to print them out. The, the cradle plans are specifically for the DeWalt, but there's no need to build a custom set of plans for the job site saw or the CTS because the, the plans are the same. It's just a matter of scaling. So each tool, you know, will, will require slightly different dimensions. And so once, uh, once you know how to build it, then taking the plans and just leveraging them. So what I basically did again was I figured out the, how tall the saw was and ripped my board for that and then just uh knew how you know i knew by just measuring uh the length of it and looking at the plans knowing that i needed extra space along the back because that's where the vacuum goes i'm able to look at the plans calculate all that in spend a little time making notes once i'm confident that okay this is what i need this becomes my template to do the other one and then everything else fits to take the plans, look at them, and make adjustments based on, once I calculate this, I know the rest of the dimensions, how they're going to uh, turn out. I drew it out, looked much like this here, and then I took my short track, came up close to the corners, and then finished the cutoff with, with the pull saw. Once I have this done, I've confirmed that this is right, and the height is kind of interesting because I know if I'm flush with the top, it's going to be perfect. Now I am putting a piece of 18 mil inside here, which will saw sit on it, will jack the saw up 18 mil. But then I have that top piece going on that hangs over and attaches to the bench. So it's, a, it's an automatic offset. I just laid it on here, found the sweet spot, draw it out. So I've already done that. I've got the lines here, here, and then inside and here. I'm at the point now to just make sure everything works before I cut the back and the top and finish it out. So the sides I knew worked, I had tested one and I've got it flush to the front of the base. I cut the bottom out uh, to make sure that the feet are solidly resting where they go. It'll be a top piece will go on top of this, which that is flush with the top. I can verify that by laying this across the top here and then having this and that's good. Now I can make up the back. I can make up uh, my spreader piece. Then the top piece I'll calculate. This one will come from the leading edge and it'll stick out in the back here a bit the way this one does. So this is how it, this is the magic here. This is the system where it just drops on. You don't even have to look. Just put it on, slide it till it falls, finds a hole, and it'll line up along the ends, back and forth, in the middle. It'll go down the sides that way. Just a nice, nice setup. I might open that up. I, I might play with that. Right now it's solid. Primacore Plus ply. Lightweight, really beautiful stuff. It screws up together really well. It, it uh, glues really well. I've just I've had a lot of good luck with assembly. I haven't had any delamination.
The CTS is all glued up and assembled with 18 gauge nails. Still going to use fast cap power head screws. My next step now is to make this a support piece and get it drilled. To drill the holes, I'm using the Parf Guide Mark II. I've used this, shown you how to use this in many other videos. It's the only system I use for all of my benches, the router tables, all the accessories. It's really the only accurate system available to us on the market, short of having a CNC machine or taking it to a CNC shop. What I wanna point out here is that I did the layout with the pilot holes, and then I figured out which two holes I was gonna use for the three-quarter dowel. Those two I did not drill with the 20 millimeter bit. All the rest I did. And then I took a three-quarter bit Using that pilot hole, I was able to center it where the 20 millimeter hole would go and drill a three quarter inch hole about halfway through the thickness of the material. Then I was able to glue the dowel in and put a screw through it on the top. That's how all the cradles work. Once I tested it with clamps, then I used some screws, screwed the, the um, attachment piece on. And with the three quarter dowels, it drops in the bench with a little bit uh, more ease than if I were trying to use a 20 millimeter dowel. Cradle is done, almost. It's totally functional now. It's doing exactly what I was hoping for. The saw is much smaller than the bigger saw stop, so it fits on the bench. So it doesn't hang out on this side at all, which is, which is excellent. I was wanting that. And of course, it'll work great on the, on the smart bench as well. Now that the saw stop CTS is set up and in the shop, it's going to be the only table saw I use now for quite some time. I just want to put it through its paces, work it hard, uh, keep checking it for accuracy, and um, also to see how strong the motor is and things like that. I'm really happy to have a small saw with the brake technology in it. And now if it'll just do everything that I need, then this will be, be my saw. If you enjoyed hanging out in the Smart Wood Shop today and building out the cradle for the CTS, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell so you'll know when we put up a new video. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and have a great day.